trying to determine if I know. Yeah, no, we had the um. Oh God, the space mar not the space marine. The why am I blanking on it? Starship trooper stuff uh, in this town recently. I think it was this town. It might be no, it was this town down here. So this is all new territory, actually. All right. Anyway, I'm going to continue with the unit breakdown because that's what we uh, started doing in the previous roster. So we were on, I believe, uh, Pro Hunter leading Charlie 1 with Grog, uh, Gagu, Circles, and with the Balls, Thompson, Solomon, and Mike. Lolo leading Charlie 2 with Andre, Sismo, Mike, and Barton. And then Hotel 1 is going to be Pierce flying the AH6 Little Bird. Off 4 being commanded by Vagrant. I was wondering when he would take his command position because uh, we always see him command at least once in the branches here. So Vagrant leading Platoon HQ. Norris leading X-Ray with Fred, Bates, Chol, and Guardian Zen under him. Azuki leading Alpha HQ, Alpha 1B led by Steve with Good Time Saddam, Fafmo, Holton, Kabubi, uh, Kabubi Face, Dooley, and M. John. Uh, Valetarian leading Bravo HQ, Bravo 1 being led by Nemo with Ronnie, Hitenios, and Fluffy. You got to be watching these 7R guys. They clutched the last round for Blue 4. Uh, Flynn Ninja leading Bravo 2 with Daedalur, uh, Zombie Forever, Joseph, Zali, and C4. Lakar 4 leading Charlie HQ with Yuru leading Charlie 1 with Audi, Leziak, da uh, Dawadox, Deska Keeper, and Navy Chan. And we got some Papanga Pyro. Oh, God, look at this team. Arma Jesus leading Delta HQ. Delta 1 be led by Flux with Legal Action and Maz, which they just merged with Delta Actual. You're going to see this group merge with them as well. Of King, Cake Here, Bance, Dream, and Nass all together. And then Blam, Patriot, and Loki taking the BTR. Yes, boo. It is. Uh, sometimes at full power, they flicker like this. So if I find my remote, which I might have moved on accident, I can lower the power. I need to clean off my desk again. Every few months, I have to clean this damn desk off. Ah, here's the remote. It does get dusty, I know. And then we change the color. Also, it is 5.30, so I might go AFK after doing the uh, debrief here because I need to turn the lights back on my uh, greenhouse. Uh, simply because between the hours of 3 and 6 o'clock right now, that's when power is the most expensive per kilowatt hour. So I just have them take their uh, two, three hour break because plants sometimes need a break from, uh, or certain plants, most plants actually need a break from 24 hour sunlight uh, to regenerate certain functions. So. Yeah, we got that. Otherwise, let's go ahead and look at our mission info. So Eric Hiru made this mission. Background Op 4 is added again. Scientists in some secret factory are creating tree sprouts that float in the air. Oh. Blue 4. <laughs> mission rules. Blue 4 can only have one squad in the second safe zone before start, which was that small zone we saw earlier. Game conditions. This is uh, add sector here. Uh, so if the defenders have one guy in the sector, the attackers can't take it. Once all people in the sector are down, uh, are dead, unconscious, or uh, get into a turret or a vehicle. Um then the sector becomes takeable by the attackers. So with that done, uh, mission variables, 800 meter distance for renders, only 64 build points. Awkward number because uh, stuff are in the, I don't think there's any two variables for, um, maybe there is, maybe some points are worth 12 points or something for building, but that's kind of a weird number to choose. Usually it's divisible by five. Uh, otherwise, Matt's weaponry opt for having Igla for uh, their second AT weapon. Uh, and otherwise, a single RPG, two Blue 4 have two uh, Mazes, both with uh, two rounds each, and the Igla has one, which means the uh, Igla Gunner has one AT round and his assistant get an additional AT round. Blue 4 uniforms are going to be the Modern Army Multicam Camouflage. Breaking it down here, you got the Platoon Lead, Platoon Sergeant, Squad Leader, Team Leader, Auto Rifleman, Auto Rifleman, Assistant, Grenadier, Grenadier IR. Grenadier IRs are the guys that fire those parachute rounds, uh, which are 40 millimeter cameras. You can fire in the air, deploy a parachute. You can uh, access it like a camera. It gives you a top-down image of uh, everything around it. Uh, really useful useful for getting your bearings on the area. Machine gunner, machine gunner assistant, combat engineer, light answer tank, medium answer tank, and assistant, medium answer tank, two and assistant, recon infantry, recon infantry scout. Do these matter? Yes, there is x-ray today, so these uh, three roles here do matter. Your designated marksman for Blue 4 appears to be a Mark 11. Crew lead, crewman, pilot, medics, and the base kit. Loadouts for Blue 4 are going to be M16A4s and M4A1s uh, with the Block 2 model. Uh, both of those, I think, aren't full auto. They're only three-round bursts. Uh, same with the M4A1. Glock 17s as their secondaries, 249s, 240 Golfs as their light machine gun and medium machine guns, respectively. Light 9s, I think, is going to be M136. And it was absolutely AT launcher. 
Hint disposable. Spoke that a little too fast. My bad. Otherwise, Sniper gets the choice of an M2010, that sniper rifle, uh, bolt action, with uh, various different camos here. Two suppressed shooters get the choice between a Mark 14 or Socom 16. Both are 762 by 51 NATO battle rifles uh, with 20-round magazines. Not too um, much of a difference there. Otherwise, crew and aviation either get the MP7 submachine gun or an M4A1. Nothing on crew serve weapons for Blue 4. Otherwise, their vehicles include an unarmed M113, four transport trucks, AH-6 Little Bird with two M134 minigun pylons. Uh, they got a much Jeep with a 50 cal on, which is your 151, uh, two M113s with 240 golfs on them, uh, and then one Humvee with an M2 on it, and it is up armored, as you see from right there. It just doesn't have the canopy. Uh, for meanwhile, their uniforms are going to be the Kosiak guys that we saw from the previous round. Their marksman rifle, as I like to skip down, is going to be the SVD under DMR. That is uh, what it looks like. You can tell by that green wrap right there and the length of the gun itself. Loadouts otherwise are going to be AK-74 based, either the uh, modernized version or the uh, carbine version. Almost all of them always choose that one. Uh, they got an RPK or a PKP for their light medium machine gun, respectively. RPG-26 for a single-shot disposable AT weapon. Recon gets the T-5000. Two suppressed shooters uh, in recon get the choice of either an AKS-74 with 45-round banana mags or an AS-Val chambered at 9 by 39 six. with 20-round yeah. mags. Uh, and then crew and aviation get a choice of either the PP-2000 or an AKS. Uh, Stone Will, thanks for giving Green Neko a sub. Neko um, is... I think spent the day building some really cool underground composition stuff. It looked good, Neko. If you ever want to send it to me for me to use, I would appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you so much. Hope you both keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Otherwise, oh, was I not supposed to say it, or are you saying that because of the sub? Either way, I do apologize if it was what I said. Didn't know if you were keeping it a secret or not. My bad. Otherwise, two gas transport trucks, four uh, transport cars, and then a single BTR-80 uh, with a 7.62x54 coax and a 14.5mm rain gun. Weird. I mean, there's a lot of assets on Blue 4, but none on Op 4. Otherwise, your sectors include the following area. Sector 1, which is this nice little fortified base right here, uh, which is part of the map. Sector 2, which is uh, this underground bunker-esque area, which they've already begun moderately fortifying. You can also have roof access on the back. And then Sector 3 is uh, part of the town itself, tied to this uh, quote-unquote secret bunker here, which... Uh, yeah, not so secret. You can't really access the interior. It's more for show. So it's controlling the outside of it as well as this uh, block on the MSR here. Actually, I don't think the secret thing is even tied to it. So I think this is just like a random... No, okay, no, it's added. It's just on the northern side now. It's looking south. So it's control for that block. Either way... Not too much. It's going to be a pretty short fight, in my opinion, because of all the assets Blue 4 has, how close the objectives are to each other. Uh, and then, you know, Blue 4 having a single squad start in the front force, but they can only be on foot. So I'd imagine Blue 4 might just drive over, pick them up. Uh, assault from the tree lines here, because Wamako does have some pretty nice thick tree uh, forests to fight from. And then just get into position and take things out. Just a lot of uh, single-story buildings, but this street has a lot of two stories with good overwatch positions. Uh, and then it's just a bunch of shanty town around. What was the map for round two? It was Chernaris Autumn. Uh, but it was heavily modified to look more of a sci-fi-esque map, which is pretty nice. Overall, I don't really have a prediction for how this is going to go. Yes, on Op4, you have a lot of good players, but they're stuck on defense. Blue4, you do have Scandi Recon, where defense is their strong suit. But really, the advantages have gone to... Uh, either in round two, it was a bunch of names that we normally don't see. Uh, fighting against each other, and then round one, it was just a macro fight uh, where Blue 4 did the right tactics to win. So Blue 4 has won both rounds tonight. Maybe that'll bleed over for round three because it has been just Russian-based kits fighting American-based kits, so we'll see if that holds true, but I don't know what to say beyond that, in all honesty. It, it could be anyone's game here. And right on, Echo, I appreciate it. All right, we've only written down six highlights for today. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it's kind of refreshing not to constantly be writing down things to edit back later because the past, like, three or four, if not five weeks of FNF, I've had, like, a full sticky notes worth of highlights by the end. But here, it's been pretty calm. That's pretty relieving. Usually it means the rounds are a lot more serious and some pretty well-lit action. Right on, Echo. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Otherwise, if you guys got anything else to say, feel free. 
And I mean, that's it. We got six minutes to chill. Uh, after this round, we'll play a little bit of DayZ. I'm going to probably play an hour's worth, start trying to get myself to Tizzy. And uh, then we'll be back for the NA branch, and then I'm going to chill. See, but for the other two rounds, we were literally making it down to the wire here. It's like, it's, it's a pretty simple operation. More tiny church. Good God. This is pretty much all set. I agree. Tiny church does need a return. You can bonk again. Good God. Hydrate. And a posture check. Yep. What are we doing tomorrow? That's a fair question, because I have not prepped any Arma Ops for the weekend, so I'm going to probably prep one tonight to run Sunday, because uh, there's a few things I have in the air, but I'm still wrapping my head on how to properly do them. Uh, so Saturday, I might just take the evening off, or I'm going to literally just run something and say whoever shows up can play. Um, but I'll make a decision. I'm going to probably take a break from Starship Trooper just to uh, run something else. Yes, boo. Uh, we could do Duck Game, if you want. My only planned stream is 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock for some Star Wars stuff. After that, we'll see how things go. Oh, Neko, you're fine. I can figure out how to spectate it. There's a lot of tricks you can do to still spectate inside tight quarters. Uh, giggity. But... Yep, no, we... Um, I have made plans with Blood Wayne to play Duck Game again. I just need to practice. And then even when I do practice, she's still going to kick my ass. But hey, a lot of you enjoy that, so... You're out of seat. Don't give me... Don't do that, honey. Don't give me hope. Don't give me fucking hope, please. That window just broke. I wonder if um they have a command for that or something. So I can just break the windows beforehand instead of having to burn bolts immediately on that. Also, question, when are you making dinner? When are you making dinner? Oh, okay. When the hot dogs defrost. Um, I'm just wondering so I can time it, because I'm thinking maybe I can give myself like 45 minutes for, um, here's the water glass if you don't mind refilling it. Uh, 45 minutes for dinner. And then, um, oh shit, I still have three minutes. I need to go turn on my, um, you know, my jigs. So give me one second. I got to turn the greenhouse power unit back on and then adjust the uh, heating valve because uh, it's about to be six o'clock. So give me one moment. You know, it's fun to be a streamer and a house husband. It's just really fun to bundle that all together. I'm just saying, for the record. 
you click control A and automatically loaded everything. And yes, Neko, I would imagine you'd be at one FPS at that point. <laughs> you gotta be careful. All right. Wrapping my robe around me, we saw Op4 set up some really nice fortifications on these buildings so they can really lock down the open areas. I'm gonna be honest. I could see Blue4 just swarming in and hitting these objectives. And I can see Op4 just fumbling it. But it does look like Op4 is going to do an all eggs in one basket approach and hold the town. So Blue4 is just going to have to send forces around to sweep the other two sectors. But this is probably going to be a 30-minute uh, match at most. But who the hell knows? So mission has started. Let's go ahead and watch things from above and see how things go. Uh, did I have to take out the trash? No, I was turning on my uh, greenhouse unit back on because I have to... Uh, Flip the power, lights come back on automatically. I have to make sure the fan turns back on for intake. And then I have to adjust the heating unit. Uh, basically, it resets every time the power shuts off. So you got to turn it back on and then set it to blow hot, hot air. I set it to 65 degrees, and that keeps the entire uh, Bloodwings dancing next to me. She's being a bit of a goober. But that, um, if you put it at 65 degrees, uh, what it does and how the unit works is. Uh, air blows from under the greenhouse, so it pulls in air, uh, and then it's aimed at the heating unit. So the heating unit, which is right next to some of the grow spaces, uh, it prevents the heat from coming out in like a jet, and instead just has the heat kind of immediately blow to the back so it doesn't burn any of the plants. And then it travels upwards, but then circulates because of the fan. Um, so it's, it's a very nice design. But I don't mind doing it. It's just I need to get in the rhythm of, um, for the weekdays, turning off the power for so long. Uh, for when it becomes the second uh, other season where uh, power companies start charging for two different periods in the day for three hours, I'm just going to extend the break or I can just do it twice. But I have to check the schedule again because um, I can still have it on like a 16 grow hour period and still be fine and then not pay really high rates for power at that time. But it's fun. Um, we occasionally do a stream with it now. I did a stream for building it. I did a stream recently for thinning it. Uh, and then in another week or two, I'll show you guys the pea flowers, just as a thing. Because uh, on the bottom, I've got pea plants growing up uh, a modified trellis I've made, uh, where it's just a bunch of um, wire mesh. And they've taken a good liking to them. And I've already started flowering. I'm just keeping them well uh, fed with fertilizer, so... Yes, and we that's exactly my point because the heater unit for this greenhouse is right next to the pea plants. So my big fear was accidentally cooking the pea plants, but they're perfectly fine because it immediately diffuses the heat and prevents the pea plants from getting singed. I haven't seen any trace of leaf singeing, which is great. Uh, it's just the positioning has to be exact, but based off of how I have the boxes set up, it's pretty nice. Otherwise, we still have Blue 4 coming in. Looks like they're going to be going for a southern attack. You probably will see this group on the northern side hit Sector 1 and 2, take that. Uh, main fight will be for Sector 3 as Blue 4 gets in the position. So we're just going to wait it out and see. This is one of the things about FNF, which, you know, as a caster, you got to be a little cautious about. It's just the downtime as the unit set up. Yes, we can watch it all from here. I know most of you like seeing the action itself. We just have to be a little bit patient here. Uh, I do my best to cover, of course, but we just have to wait it out. Now, Omako has a few unique things. It has a bunch of random rock positions built up like this. It also has some really nice random patches of elephant grass, which you can hide things in. Uh, that's how I do bug spawning on this map, which is why I love this map for Starship Troopers, because there's so many places you can just spawn in bugs immediately to get right on top of the players and just claim that they were hidden, you know? Worst comes worse, you have a bug hole in there that they just can't find and seal properly, and you can treat it as a spawn point. Oh, yeah, I, I remember FNF in the days where sometimes the chopper would just go out and crash immediately. That was pretty damn funny. Good times. Ah, 
So we've got Blue 4 divided into three separate groups right here. You've got vehicle assets on the northern and southern sides. These are probably the uh, 113s with the 240 Gulfs on them. Uh, yep, that is the case. Uh, the treads are doing something funny down there. But those are basically going to be supporting the infantry from the rear. But it's just going to be a lot of momentum right now. First five minutes or so that have gone through. You also have the little bird doing reconnaissance. So the main fight's going to be here. Why the hell is Op4 X-Ray all the way back here? Like, there's a meme, which is why they started taking X-Ray out, where X-Ray just does, like, the opposite thing of whatever the main force does in, like, the dumbest way possible. And this isn't meant to be an insult to anyone in particular. This is just how X-Ray is sometimes played, which makes them incredibly useless for the AO. But this one, I really don't get. Because if you have a BTR down here, you're locking down the southern side so they can't run around over here. So the only reason that force is here is if you're plant thinking Blue 4 is going to do this. Go all the way around, bypass Sector 1 and 2, and then just come in from this area and hit Sector 3. That would be one of the biggest Giga Chad moves I've ever seen in FNF. Because holy crap, they would just instead just hit Sector 1 from up here at that point. They wouldn't do a massive flank around right here. X-Ray has its purpose, Malin. If they kept it with the main force, a sniper at the platoon level working with the platoon would be great. Two suppressed shooters to use as infiltrators, to basically as scouts to scout the main route would be great. But it's just so silly how it's sometimes used. But I get why. That's why staff don't like it. And I'm going to be honest, I think it has been better seeing them without X-Ray because, I mean, last round, X-Ray was just doing... They had their own little scuffle somewhere, and that was it. Yeah, like they did last mission. They literally went off in their own thing, had their firefight, killed each other, and that was it. Had nothing to do with the rest of the fight other than I think Dream got some pretty good sniper shots, which thinned out enough Op4 guys to make that clutch possible. But, uh, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, exactly, Malin. It's interesting. Platoon doesn't know how to use them in B. People think, oh my god, Snipper Riffo, and have to go and act as a recon element, which is not true. Absolutely not true. Any squad can do recon. You can literally just take four slots in a team and just go, hey, do recon. The little bird just got hit by something. That was an Igla launch. And, uh... That poor little bird might not be utilized today. Actually, I don't hear it damaged. What am I talking about? It's a little bird getting hit by iglas. The worst that's going to happen is it's going to lose its tail rotor. You see it's spinning very slowly, which means it has taken tail rotor damage. But Pierce knows how to fly without a tail rotor, so... Yeah, the igla is not really good at countering the little bird because the little bird usually just shrugs off the first hit. And the Eagle's only given a bit. The times where the pilots do crash, though, is if they accidentally auto-rotate themselves and just spin because there's no tail rotor, or they try to land it and they crash. And I would say, honestly, a little under 50-50 in favor of them not crashing. Um, do you see the chopper still exploding that way? And yes, as Malin said, you can't fix people. As nice as it would be, and I mean, it's not even a people thing. It's more of just an FNF culture thing because if so many different people are doing it that way, it's not the people's fault. It's just the perceived culture of it itself. Now, look at this. Blue 4 at the edge of a tree line here, taking a lot of fire. Op 4 has a pretty good defensive line. Blue 4 might actually try to push forward with smoke. Really risky because they're going to need multiple levels of smoke grenades to get up to the shanty town to get some good positions of cover. And you've already got, I assume this is Scandi Recon firing these GLs at this range, because they're the type to pre-range shit like this. Nope, it's Legal Actions team with uh, all these elite players here, which would also pull something like that. Because Scandi's on uh, Blue 4 here. So both sides using uh, indirect fire in the form of uh, GLs, which you know, practically turns them into mortars at this point. Air, you know, that's a great question. I, I'm not going to get... I've been in that rant so many times. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say anything. Because that is also one of the flaws with that team itself. All 
All right, so now you're just having this massive battle line go here. This is going to probably put pressure on Delta's position the most, but it is Papega. And Papega are really good at turning their forces around and immediately re-engaging different areas. Uh, Neko, yeah, you're fine. Send it whenever. I know you're busy. Tell Pixie I said hi. All right, otherwise we've got Gamma up here with a lone BTR. I mean, it could be sniped by Blue 4 AT up here. But really, this is just the entire force of one group fighting an entire force of a separate group. Blue 4 X-Ray slowly encroaching from the north. Op 4 X-Ray going north might fucking counter each other again and just cancel each other out. I do appreciate Op 4's position up on this uh, rock crop, though. I'm hoping that the marksman here face can... Uh, Get some good pickoffs. Now, you got to remember, when I go into this interface here, where they're actually looking is not 100% accurate to where they're actually firing, which is why you got to uh, follow the tracer around. So even if it looks like they're way off, they can't still be getting headshots. It just looks funny. Now, why does Arma do it that way? I don't freaking know. It's just Arma. So Blue 4 have been able to get their main force to the Shantytown. The reason they were able to accomplish this was because Delta started getting pushed off their position because of flanking elements in Blue 4's massive line here coming around. That's going to force these guys to pull back and set up secondary defenses, but this is going to get Blue 4's foot in the door. And I'm going to be honest with you, if Blue 4 wins this fight, it's GG. I just don't really see how Op 4 can counter it because they still have so many forces at different angles covering different directions, not realizing this is just a massive battle line push. The M2 firing Nordic Prophet. He did get a kill with that 50 already, so he's picking off some of the best players on tonight. He killed Nass. Ooh. I think Nass, yeah, he tried to get in that car and was immediately taken out. And you've got King pulling his body out to see if there's anything useful to grab. I think Nass was just a medic. And since this is round three, you're going to see some immediate disconnects as the round continues on. 11 minutes have passed. Blue Force starting to get their foot in the door. You've got all these forces on the southern side. And then X-Ray is eventually going to come in here and start hitting the uh, Sector 1 and 2 positions, just taking them because Op 4 has chosen not to defend them. Pretty fair and simplistic AO in all honesty. I just haven't seen Wamako used a lot in FNF. I think at all, to be honest. I think the only other time was a Black Hawk Down-esque style scenario done over here, which is what brought my attention to this map in the first place. Which goes to show you this mod set has... Pierce. Pierce, Pierce, please. There are people down there that happen to also be on your team. Pierce. That's going down to my little dirty list of highlights. All right. Blue on blue. All right, so you got this middle force coming up here. You still have this flanking force. They've been a bit stalled, maybe because they spotted the uh, BTR. Looking over here, though, these guys are wounded and actually bandaging themselves, so the BTR might have gotten shot earlier, and they might have had to pull it back and repair it. But you're just seeing Op4 slowly pulling things around. Op4 X-Ray, though, coming into a potential flanking position here. Quite interesting. All right. So this will be the main front line here as Blue4 continues to push up. Op4 have set up a... Uh, Bit of a defense here, but there's been a bit of low ground right there. Got out for an Overwatch trying to stop him. Who's excited for DayZ, by the way? We'll probably be there in 30 minutes, give or take. Uh, if not less. What, boo? Uh, yes, I'm going to do... I told you, I'm going to do DayZ and then wrap that up, and we're going to have dinner. I think I'm still sick in the server, so I gotta keep taking uh, tetracycline. Trooper, thanks for the 41 month resub, my man. Poor woman. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, and I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. 
All right, got some grenades starting to be thrown. The wall's gonna absorb most of that blast, though, and that's gonna let Blue Four know there might be up for right on their nose. He almost got away with that. Actually scares me. I think the wall's gonna... Uh, no! No! <laughs> I knocked out other people over there! Oh! Those were blue four charges, by the way. Oh my god. You guys. Why are you being stupid? <laughs> hey, remember when I said we weren't writing down a lot of highlights? Yeah. I lied. Good old Charlie Foxtrot, because we can't say what it really means on Twitch without getting people mad at us. So you got X-Ray coming along the flank, but these guys are already folding in. Blue 4 X-Ray still being incredibly cautious to move into the base. This force all the way up here is the only thing that concerns me. They're all getting pinned by a BTR and just some other infantry right here. So this is causing these guys get defeated in detail because they're only attacking with a third of their force. So that's giving Op 4 a chance to actually properly repel everything. And it's not helping that Blue 4 is literally 18 their own guys. M2's taking some pretty heavy fire here. Ooh, we got some rubber banding. That's no bueno. Looks like it recovered though, so it's just a temporary thing. Don't know what caused that, but you never know what might happen. Another hydrate, you got it. More AT coming in. And that Humvee does not care, but it looks like the engine got cut, which is why they're now running. Gets his leg blown out. He's trying to crawl away. I was trying to pop smoke. Oh, poor Nordic. Yeah, probably a Vic running something dumb over. Yeah, I saw that now. It happens. Now we got Charlie 2 on the northern side. They might be countered by Bravo 1, though. You still got the Lilbert flying around. Really, we need to see these guys come over. Who's the commander? It's Tilsiter. So I don't know why we have all these guys just all the way down here doing nothing, like on the edge of the map. But they, if they were assaulting from the southern flank, they'd be really putting the pressure on Opor here. But because Opor doesn't have that side getting molested, they still have a lot of room to set up for these counterattacks. You're seeing Blue Force starting to take multiple knockouts here. And X-Ray just captured Sector 1. You're going to see them go and touch Sector 2 as well. Uh, but Op4 still has a pretty good chance. I was a little worried in the beginning because it looked like Blue Force had a really good plan in play, but it might get uh, stopped. Yep. All right, so we're watching now Blue 4 on this uh, far side getting taken out. Again, if they had this force here to assist, it would be a different story, but... Oh, my God. Oh, my God! They, of course it's freaking Bayons. Again, I claim he is the best player in FNF, and you just witnessed why I make those claims. The man just waltzed over and annihilated everyone. My god. Oh, and there's another dude over here that just got two kills. Who did that? Who are you, mysterious stranger? It's King, who is also one of the best players here. So basically, the the chat squad is counterattacking and murdering at you. 
You did not. You. We're averaging a highlight every 40 seconds now. It helps if you get the satchel over the wall. Anyway, blue four looks like X-Ray rushed down and got the other area. Another satchel was thrown. But now I think off four has a good chance to win here because they've broken the central attack. They're just easily counterattacking it. And uh, I think they can now turn this around. So what does kind of suck about this, admittedly, is this is going to be a very drawn-out round because Blue Force dragging their feet. Now, I think just saw King get iced there. But, I mean, he's on five kills. Let's let's look at this. So Jesus on none, Maz on none, Leal action on Flux on one, Kekir on none. King was at five, Dream was at one, Bayon's on five. So those two heavy hitters pretty much nullifying the rest of these forces here. Guys, give me another hydrator too. I want to finish this Tootsie Roll drink. It's delicious. Thank you. Need one more. And a posture check. AT landing really well in this building. Just noob tube this guy. From I don't even know how far. That was a great shot. Was that Iander being Iander? Yeah, was that? Yeah, he's on a kill. Leo to Iander to literally put an AT round in a guy's butt. <laughs> Leave it to freaking Iander. So X-Ray on the rear here. They can also start cleaning up all these forces. You got Blue 4 X-Ray coming up. Pierce now trying to do a low and slow gun run. I think he got his tail rotor repaired because at that speed he should be spinning. Uh-oh. Little bird took some damage. It only sounds superficial though, because it's still up in the air. I don't see it uh, powering down. All right. I mean, skull count wise, almost all of Alpha's dead. Op4 still have a good chunk of guys remaining. Op4's BTR is still up and was able to pull back, and now it's harassing this flank as it comes in. And they're getting multiple knockouts here. Yeah, this group's mostly cut off because that's just down to X-Ray. That northern team is also barely anything at this point. Ma's going. Goes over, unfortunately. We'll see if the BCR does uh, a counter. Mwah! His name is Iander. A-I-N-D-E-R. And that is his Maz. Literally hit it in the duck bill front and still managed to cook it off. Why did they not displace? You know, that's a question I always ask myself. If you take AT, why don't you immediately try to get away? And the answer is, they just don't think they need to. And then Iander comes along and reminds them that displacing was probably the smart thing to do. And now he's trying to noob tube infantry and he gets it really close. As now you've got those uh, elite forces trying to go up on the counterattack, but because of all this open area, it's going to be a little less effective. Another Op4 guy taken out. That was Roche getting a little lucky with his 249. But I think it was uh, someone running out of ammo there. Was it Flux? Yeah, it was Flux trying to get a cheeky one. Just ran out of ammo. But I mean, the 249, in my opinion, is the best weapon to have in uh, FNF. Because it's just the, the most w versatile weapon you can use. You can treat it like a machine gun. You can treat it like a rifle. 
Uh, you just have to make sure you don't single shot it. It's designed to be used in burst because by the second and third shot, it bounces the weapon down in terms of recoil so you can be accurate. So if you use it in burst or just mag them, you can easily control the damn thing. Dream immediately smoke grenading himself. And this is Bayant right here on the five kills. Oh, is he gonna do the, he's gonna get behind the 113 and shoot it from the rear. And Blue Force started pushing and immediately saved whoever was in here. Dream is gonna, okay. Just got shot in the neck there. Oh, and then he got headshotted by Cake here's PKP. 762 by 54 does not fuck around. It's a satchel! Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Wow. That, uh. That's a lot of damage. Hey. Did you, uh, did you satchel? Oh, Dream just disappeared. Hi. Yeah, uh, were those your satchels? Yeah. Nice! How many did I get? Uh, it looks like four or five. Five. Six. I saw them and I was like, oh, fuck it, I have these two satchels. Time to go. Okay. Take you're getting another PKP pickoff. I was on some demon mode shit. Yeah. Yeah, you were. And, yep. I, I was running around. Um, and I saw this M113 and I was like, oh shit. Uh, so I crouched behind a, a thing, zoomed in, watched someone die, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go blow up this um, M113. And then I just saw like five or six dudes stream out the smoke. I dropped to the yep. floor, shot at a couple of them. They didn't see me. I got up, ran towards them, just went, yep, it's time. All right. That was probably one of the coolest things you've done in a while, admittedly. Yeah, no, that, uh, that, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Oh yes, always put your infantry in open field. That's how FNF yeah, usually yeah. plays. That's how it works. Numbers wise, I mean, blue four and op four, I'd, I'd say op four is going a little higher on the numbers at this point. I mean, you can just see the skull count on blue four in terms of the amount of forces even remaining on the server. We're past halftime. And I, I just don't see Blue 4 winning this at this point. There's just too many outlying fights going on. Oh, okay, cake I just, here. yep, Cake here got hit by the grenade, okay. could still wake back up, but they're cleaning up the rest of the bodies that you blew up with the damn satchel. <laughs> I just heard the little bird powered down somewhere, actually. I think Pierce is doing some more field repairs, yep. Uh, yeah, we hit the little bird, obviously. It just was a... Uh, legal hit the little bird early on. I thought I had a good name. I end her trying to get double taps and he pulls out him Oz. Oh no, the noob tube. <laughs> now do it again. Now do it again. He's doing it again. Do it again. He's doing it again. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But do it again. Oh no, he's gonna hit him with the right one. No, he's not. He gets Do spoke. it. Come on. Do it. Go on. Pops of smoke. Heels. Come on. Do it again. He might think that's the same guy, though, and you didn't hit him the first time. Yeah. Who is Delta H? I think that's my... Yeah, you have armor, Jesus, so they'll be talking right now. Ah. Yeah, so now he's pushing him. It's cake here. Oh, but Ayana's getting shot at from a different angle. Cake here is going to finish this. He's mid reload. Oh. Blown away, but he did not cake here to his feet. Now cake here is on five kills as well. So many people. Um, King was on five. Bay was on five, and now Cake here is on five as well. So 15 yeah. between the three of them. K Bay jumped a wall, got <laughs> I saw. I saw. <laughs> uh, and then killed everyone. He he was the ambush. <laughs> he was the ambush. See, he was about to get killed, but the guy firing at him held his fire because a friendly went in front of his line.
So he was forced to hold. If not, he would have killed his buddy. And then Bay just pulled them both away with the PKP. It was... Yeah. I heard him jump. I heard the bullets. I was like, oh, Bay's dead. And I was going to throw a satchel. But then I just heard... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I was like, I oh, know he's fine. Another thing that comp they just shot Pierce out of the freaking oh, helicopter. Oh, oh wait. Oh, <laughs> oh and there goes the facility. Oh. No, our flying trees. Oh. Everywhere oh, I look wait. is a highlight. The three is just... What? Driven into the middle. Someone has to have a launcher here. Are they just oh. rushing? No I think they've them. given up and they're just rushing. I mean, now they're pulling into just this is friendly wing, maybe it's a friendly wing. We're all just watching it. What is going on? So, cake is next to Nav's body, and that AT stick's still there. What is this? Uh, not now, it's kicked in. Let me see. Well, the Golf 1 guy, Patriot, is on his way with that MP7. Yeah, we are making up for those damn lacks of highlights, that's for sure. And they've left the engine on, which I think is one of the worst ideas you can do when doing a rush. Because obviously <laughs> the sound pollution works, but. If you're doing a rush and you try to get into a clear area, you're just gonna, like, they're gonna know where you are. I mean, they'll know where you are from the rush, but you know. Oh, Patriot might be in a bad spot because he's about to get flanked by Lolo. Yeah. But Lolo's being too cautious. Uh, oh, Lolo, pause Oh, no. Oh, no. He's not gonna be looking the right way. Look. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> It's not the MP7, is it? It's the MP... That's the PP2000. PP2000. PP. Well, the MP7 is superior because it's chambered in 5.7, yeah. which is just a nasty round. Especially when it fires so many. Nice. Our defenses held pretty well. No, I'm looking at it. So the only reason the defenses held well is because Blue 4 completely fumbled their attack. They yeah. attacked with one out of the three forces, and then the second out of the third, and then the third out of four, uh, out, the third yeah. out of the third, and now it's just kind of turned into this jumbled mess where op fours maintain the numbers advantage. They attacked through the shanty town, and I was sitting up on a hill like, where the fuck is everyone? The shanty town would have been fine if their force to the south would have closed in, but it just hugged <laughs> the damn border for some stupid reason. Yeah, it gave us just perfect ability to just snipe them as they counter things as they yeah down. came in, and then Bay and Cake here and. King decided I'll get five kills a piece. Yeah. Ooh, he got sniped. Some grenades being thrown on. Yeah, Lacar 4 is also on four kills. A lot of Op 4 dudes are literally on five plus kills. It's messy. Tilsiter just got spotted. He's getting picked off by two guys. He's playing dead at the moment. And Blue 4 are firing into smoke here. Just a little worried about random suppression. I actually don't know what causes that smoke. But I think that's just a regular smoke grenade, actually. Ah, so the reason the symbols are glitched now is because someone just threw, like, 20 smoke grenades on the uh, northern so that's side. How, that's how you know there's going to be a rush. Mm-hmm. A rush of what, though? There's, like, no Blue 4 left alive in any, con like, I guess from the west, but they're all really scattered. And there's just really good lockdown positions here for Op4 to utilize, and they are utilizing them. Ooh. Quick keyhole peek there. Mm -hmm. Literally the one spot I was looking at, and that's where the kill came from. <laughs> that's always what you like to see when the the build you see where Bravo HQ is now Redfall. 
Yanni coming to my chat saying, what an effing day. He has a raging headache from all this. I don't blame you, man. The, the tactics of this completely fell apart. Go ahead, Dream. You see the guy dead on the top of where Bravo HQ is? Uh, yeah, I under noob tubed him. Oh, yeah, with AT. I built, I built those fortifications. Nah. <laughs> Uh, Tilsiter just got killed. He was blue for platoon HQ. It was by Delta on that southern side. Now you just have the rest of blue for getting picked off here. 15 minute warning about to be called. This is going to play till the end. Mm. Is this all the way over here? That's Guardian's in. There's the 15 minute call. Okay, kids on the six now. Yeah, I think Kaker just killed, um, mm. no, he got Iander, that's, no, oh, Iander was his fifth, yeah, so he yeah, just yeah. got Tilsitter, that was his sixth. Uh, this has been a good game for Peg Pirates. Oh, yeah. I've been on fire. Yeah, I mean, it's just been Pepega, I mean, they have people like Bay. Yeah. they had okay people like Dream, but, you know, they did pretty well. Thanks, no problem. I mean, you did technically get six kills with the Satchel, but it's not credited to you because of how Satchels well, work, but. kills in two rounds. Yeah, it's not bad. That's what I've done for a while. Yeah. Yanni proud to have killed Bay. I mean, Bay got away with some ridiculous BS yes. there, admittedly, yeah, but I that's, wanted, that's I why wanted, he's Bay. He just I wanted to gets see that damn luck. <laughs> uh, on his medical car thing. Both X-rays returning to the field at the most crucial moment. Yeah, to wrap things up. That's usually how it happens. X-ray just ends up killing that's each other at the last objective after everyone else is gone after it but here x-ray can be useful that sniper can be really useful at a few hundred meters those suppressed guns at close range can be really damn useful so who is left we've got Cholt with the silenced ak uh norris with normal so often we've got the sniper the snipers on one kill off and the second pop up at the moment mm -hmm. trying to get uh who is this okay it's depso mm -hmm. The thing about these shacks are, is they are not, they are not bulletproof. No, no, no they are not. Imagine hiding in them. I can hear the freaking PKPs reloading too. Good God. Yeah. All right, Perton woke back up, is now pushing uh, into the block. I think has now made it into the zone, but now he has to kill every op four guy in the zone in order to <laughs> score that objective. 13 minutes remaining. This will probably go to overtime. And Perton got found and eliminated by no, uh, Azuki. He's on two and he's on three, so I think he took a Depso or someone or mm -hmm. like that. He's now pushing up this line. Oh, someone just took out. I don't know who that was there. Oh my he's god, Nordic. Taking out someone as he picked up Nordic, the, the that's show. so mean. Nordic says, Is Dream okay? I thought it was any team he was on would be lucky to win. I. I. <laughs> in one game. Have fun, Yanni. Oh, the shade back and forth. All right. Blue four down to four dudes. Every Let's see how long that lasts. Every team I've been on today has won. What team were PP on in the first game? Uh, PP wasn't playing the first game. Oh, were they not? Did this dude just... Are you freaking... Good time Saddam just executed... One of the blue four guys with his pistol. Incredible. I was about a... Uh... Oh, that's a really nice neighbor. Huh. I got two guys there if they're not careful. Yeah, one. Kills one, but the up four guy kills the blue four guy. Two blue four remain. Oh, I didn't tell you. I, I should have died much earlier before that... Um... Uh, before the satchel, because I was walking across an open field and the M the M113 that I blew up saw me and I friendly wiggled at it. And then died. Uh, and then got shot in the leg. Yeah. They were not very friendly. Oh, Good knockdown by Ash there. Ash on two. My boy. A submission kill, man. Ash uh, getting hit a few times there, I think, through the shed. No, it's by the flanking rock there. Major Cobb, Major Con can't pick the corner, especially since he's about to be rushed by Cake here, who's on six and he's about to get his seven. Amazing. Blue four. 
So you could say cake here here is really taking the cake. I know that one was pretty. That was like your level of bad. God, no, you're rubbing no, off on me. Bad. Yeah, fuck. Oh, I love, yeah, I'm rubbing. You're off you're on becoming me. good, and I'm becoming a shitty streamer. It's mm, damn. You're not wrong. I haven't streamed in, in a while. I need to <laughs> I've got a two week holiday next week, and I've also got a Bro. Lego Death Star. So I'm going to stream building. Stream building a Lego Death Star. Hell yeah. yeah. Not Death Star. Sorry, I'm uh, Millennium Star Destroyer. Oh, Millennium Falcon got it. Yeah, um, and then I need to. I want to. Go, I was going to get the Cult of the Cult of the Lamb. I think the new game's called. It's like a Binding of Isaac, top-down uh, sort of game, um, and I was going to stream that. I need to stream a lot. I need to make up my hour. Oh, is that Ash it? Ash got knocked to his feet. Still alive, not crippled. Malin shouting my chest saying he loves Call to the Lamb. Oh, suppress shot just went over. Oh, grenades going. Ash is in trouble. Uh, the police sirens are in progress. It's one down, and everyone else is in jail. And if you get the reference, you get the reference. I really want to make a joke. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any FNF player? Oh my you, fucking uh, god, no! <laughs> oh my god! FNF admins want to play. I think Arma Jesus just fucking threw a frag in his building and somehow blew him to hell. That's wow. All right, there's round three done. Um, no, Cole, you're right. That would be a Kobe because it did end in a crash. Anyway, we're gonna transfer into. Um... <laughs> you went into it, then you realized what I just said. Woo! Anyway, oh god, there was a satchel there too. Anyway, um, we're gonna play an intermission and then get right into Daisy. So, um, yo, pay out the prediction in a second. But if you're here for FNF, thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers. Days. We'll be back for the NA branch in two and a half hours. Otherwise, let's go uh, set up for Daisy. When are you starting your wrap?